This episode is brought to you by Rhythm and Grooves Music Academy, located at 6769 Stage Road in Bartlett, Tennessee. Rhythm and Grooves is more than your average music school. Rhythm and Grooves offers an immersive musical experience on a myriad of instruments that enable students to become versatile, employable musicians across the entire spectrum of musical performance. Students can learn the fundamentals of music in a practical environment that allows them to venture into far and away more musical styles than other lessons institutions. Rhythm and Grooves covers everything from Bach to Beale Street. Come in the store today and book your free intro lesson just by mentioning this podcast. And for more information, you can visit rhythmandgroovesmusicacademy.com or give them a call at 901-435-6577. Rhythm and Grooves also has a few events coming up for the summer. If your student is interested in playing percussion in a middle school band, there will be a beginning band startup from June 6th to June 10th. There will be a marching percussion camp for any student interested in high school marching band, and that will be June 13th through 17th. There will also be a drum set camp for any student interested in drum set from June 20th to June 24th. And all that information can be found at rhythmandgroovesmusicacademy.com slash camps. And on a personal note, I just want to thank Richard Henson, the owner of Rhythm and Grooves, so much for allowing us to record the modern working musician out of that space. Uh, it's just He's just a super nice guy and one of my dearest friends. Lastly, if you are interested in advertising with the modern working musician, please visit keganpaluso.com for more information, or you can send me an email at keganpalusomusic at gmail.com. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of The Modern Working Musician. My guest this week is the band Sunweight. They are a fusion jazz prog, just awesomeness from the Memphis area, and they have a new album out coming out April 22nd called Cannoned Hip, and it is a 25-minute long epic telling the story of an assassin named Cannoned Hip. It is totally awesome. And uh, definitely one of the coolest things I've ever gotten to listen to. And I feel so special that they would let me hear it before it came out. So uh, they're all fantastic individuals, uh, have a very well-rounded music education as well. And you can hear their intellect and their dedication as they talk about their music. Definitely one of my favorite groups I've ever gotten to meet as well as listen to their music. And uh, high school me would be so excited because this is everything I've ever wanted in a band, especially from the music I listened to in high school. So uh, they are fantastic people. You can check out their new album, Canon Tip, April 22nd. It comes out on all streaming platforms as well as vinyl. And their album release show is April 22nd at the High Tone in Memphis. So without further ado, here is Sunweight. Gotta do the intro thing too. Uh, welcome back, everybody, to an episode of the Modern Working Musician, uh, where we are on a quest to find different careers in music. This week, I'm here with Sunweight. I am Alan, the bass player. Alan. I am Nate, the human. Nate, the human. And I'm Pat, the drummer. Pat, the drummer. Okay. You probably don't have to. I know. Oh I, I appreciate I'm it. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I think that was wonderful. Go cool, yeah. Uh, and you guys have a new album coming out next week, is that right? Or uh, the 22nd, right? The 22nd, so like 11 days from now. Okay, and we'll air this next Monday. So, so yes, in a week. So, a week from whenever this airs. Sure. Sounds good. On tw- wow. April 22nd. For April 22nd. We can't do math. You, yeah. That's, that sounds perfect. Wait, you're releasing it a week from today? Yes. So, the trial will be the 18th. 18th. So, four days. There we go. In four days, go buy our record. There you go. Available online everywhere. Um, I would like to kind of jump a little bit back, um, because like I'm a huge music nerd. I taught music for a long time. Uh, do you guys have any formal music education? Uh, all three of you? Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. Can we just kind of go one by one and kind of talk about that? So sure. you want to go ahead? Let's man? start with Alan. Uh, I was in band. 
<laughs> in, uh, there you go. School. <laughs> in high school. That's where I learned how to read music. Fantastic. And, uh, stuff like that. And I, then I got, uh, I was a music ed major for a while. And I switched to music performance and jazz studies for a year. And then I met Nate and we formed this band. <laughs> so, yeah. Very cool. Where'd you go to high school? Uh, I went to Southern Baptist Educational Center. Okay. It was called that at the time. Now it's called North Point. But SBEC. Oh, I, know where SBEC. North Point is. I mean, yeah. that's how I, I didn't even yeah. know. I knew SBEC, but I didn't know what it. It sounds more awkward when you say it. Yeah. The it's way. true. <laughs> I, I never know at the point. I think I had who do you, who was your band director? Randy Dale. Okay, I think I remember. I know where North Point is. I don't know if I remember him though. Cool. And did you go to U of M? Uh, I went to U of M for uh, when I studied jazz. Okay, fantastic. And that's where I met Pat too. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, I'm yeah. guessing you went to U of M as well? I did for a little bit, but I actually didn't do, um, I just did middle school and high school band okay. uh, with doing percussion from, uh, you know, auxiliary and xylophone. Like, I rented a xylophone my senior year of high school and kept it at my house and stuff. Fantastic. And, uh, and I mean, snare drum, and then I was also jazz drummer. Fantastic, man. In cool. High school at Ridgeway, but Ridgeway. Okay. Cool. And that, yeah. And then I went, and then I went to school for audio production. Fantastic. Did you go to U of M as well? I went to MTSU and okay. U of M, and then, you know, dropped out. <laughs> <laughs> and I, but I, after that, I did production work all over the yeah. city and stuff like that. What yeah. years? Uh, I had a buddy that went to MTSU. What years did you go? I went um, 2010, 2000 to 2011. You might. Did you meet a guy named Mike Wade? He was doing audio. I think it was around that time. Mike Wade. It sounds familiar. I'm He's not... from. We went to Munford together. We st- we still. Live I'll have in to Munford. look him up on. The old FB. Yeah, he, he's yeah. Up. He's got. He does a lot of electronic music under the name Grit Smitten. Mike Wade. It sounds familiar. Yeah. He's probably been at the High Tone a few times too, which I mean. Oh, is he here now? Yeah, he lives in he lives in Tipton County. Is this Mike Wade here with us right now? Yeah, I am <laughs> Mike Wade. No. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a Spartacus thing. If I, yeah. know, <laughs> if I know you, Mike Wade, please holler at me. Yeah, Mike, text him. I don't text know. me. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, band music major as well. Uh, yeah, it was so middle and high school. Middle school I was in jazz band. High school I was in concert band and jazz band. Um, you, I went to U of M. Uh, I graduated high school in 2015. Went to U of M as I think I switched majors a lot the first couple of years. Gotcha. Uh, jazz composition, I think, is what I started as. Oh, okay. Um, for a little bit, I was drum performance. For a little bit, I was recording technology. Um, I settled on music business. Uh, gotcha. And then I met them and uh, <laughs> did a couple of stuff. And uh, <laughs> then I, yeah, I'm going to go back. I um, gotcha. But this has definitely been like number one. I got you. Um, that, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I like to sleep on motel floors and eat potato chips. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like now's the time. You know, like I, I can. It was obvious from like when you guys walked in that you have a very good like rapport and chemistry as a group. Oh, so, yeah. and, and I think, and like having listened to your record today, like it's very. It, it's a very smart record, so you can kind of hear the the like. It, not that it's like over anybody said like you can understand the record but how mm. well it's put together it's like you could definitely dive in intellectually to it as well oh yeah absolutely which is well, kind of what we wanted yeah yeah so i think like uh, if, just from the outside looking in like this is the special group where like you know you guys know you have a thing going like it, it might be the thing to go for man so uh because your music freaking rips dude <laughs> yeah thank you man yeah so that's cool, man. Like a, a huge music ed background or edu- like classical background, which is super rad. Uh, and then I, if if it's not too early, I would kind of like to dive into the the Sunweight Mobile Jazz Unit since we're transitioning. Never, heard, never too early yeah. for the Mobile Jazz. Unit. So, so what me? is the Sunweight Mobile Jazz Unit? So the Sunweight Mobile Jazz Unit. Sorry if I'm like jumping. No, go, go ahead. Um, the Sunweight Mobile Jazz Unit is something that kind of came out of us uh, kind of wanting to do something different but uh, I was wanting to do like jazz stuff because we we all play jazz and we all I mean we're all jazz I mean we're all jazz (laughs) and we all were in jazz in school and stuff like that so we you know we were like needing some money pretty much and uh, (laughs) I was uh, 
with Meredith, and she was working at um, Molly Fontaine's at the time, and I was working really late nights doing production for a production, doing audio for a production company. And so, like, one night we were talking about, you know, just maybe, like, so they needed, like, they they did jazz at Molly Fontaine, and so mm. they needed, like, a little thing, and I was like, oh, you know what, we could get some money for the band, and so Alan and I started just doing, like, guitar, piano, and I would do guitar, piano, and it was, it was a duo, yeah. And now okay. we had bass. And then, like, we did, like, like, two or three times. Maybe we even only did it twice. And I realized, I was like, this sucks without Pat. And so... <laughs> I would say it sucked. It didn't suck, but it was just not, like... I mean, it didn't suck as, like, far as, it like, wasn't the as quality. Fun. It just wasn't fun <laughs> for us. And I didn't think... I, I thought the potential of it could be better. And so we brought Pat in. I mean, and we were all doing Sunweight anyway at this time, so... Yeah. We just kind of did it for money and started. She, Meredith, put in a good word for us, and she, uh, and she got the manager to pretty much hire us on a whim without ever hearing us. Well, there you go. And, and then we did it, and we played a few gigs there, and then people started liking us, and so we started incorporating more stuff. I would bring my synthesizer in, and we would do kinds of th different things, and we did that for. A, few years until the pandemic shut down yeah. mm -hmm. and then I was like I was like we were like oh man we can't uh you know what are we gonna do we, that was like money for us too yeah. which was nice for recording and things like that and mm -hmm. so we decided uh we were like oh hey. we were we were we were rehearsing under the uh the very generous and loving high tone they were letting us rehearse there. That's how I met you that one night. Yeah, and so we were rehearsing there, and I was talking to Skinny about, um, you know, I was like, if you ever want to do like a jazz thing, like let me know. Mm -hmm. And uh, he came up with the jazz brunch at night thing, and he hit me up. He was like, hey, I'm thinking about starting this thing, you know, would you? And so we worked it out to where we would do once a month, Fantastic. and we've been doing that for. I mean, Is it a year? Almost a year now, I yeah, think. Yeah, I mean, it's been, because I think it started, like, when things were still yeah. just kind of opening back up. Yeah, I think it'll be, like, maybe June or something. It will be a year. And uh, it's just been awesome. I mean, we have to, I just have to thank Skinny, pretty much, for yeah. letting us do that. Because he, he's pretty much the guy who let, you know, let that, made that happen. Yeah. And li having listened to a little bit of both projects, like, one is very, like, uh, like heavier and oh, like yeah. how like how would you say they're different how would you say they're similar other than like having the same personnel and stuff like that I mean I don't consider them different okay personally I mean perception of people that are watching us and I think we all feel the same way like I you know I think we uh, stretch out more in the in the mobile jazz unit setting really? yeah um, we're while well, we're playing in Sunway we have like set parts and sections and things just flow smoothly while in the mobile jazz unit we can make a mistake and all of a sudden that mistake evolves in like a new section and we might play that new section for like 20 minutes I got you. Mm -hmm. and it's just like it's a free form just adventure kind of thing I yeah you. i think of it like kind of um like a comedian you know comedians will go to open mics and try out new material do yeah, things like that right. mm -hmm. and yeah. that's kind of what we get to do with uh the mobile jazz unit is we can work on our songs, but even incorporate different versions and do different different musicians. Off, yeah, different offshoots. And I mean, that's how we met our sax player Josh, who mm -hmm. is you know pretty much a live member now. Yeah. He, you know, I've known him for a little bit, but I asked him if he'd be interested in playing sax with us, and literally his audition was yeah. a show with the <laughs> he band. walked on stage and just played, and that was yeah, it was that's awesome. awesome. <laughs> that's fantastic. And so. I think that's a true testament to your musicianship too, to like be able to work on new material and it still sound decent enough to play in front of a crowd. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. that's a testament to your musicianship. Well, and it's fun for us too because you know, not that we don't, not that we play the same things exactly like they're on the record or the same things every night the same way. But, and I mean, but it gives us a different space to like experiment with new parts or like just to reinterpret old parts too. Absolutely. To just like, and I feel like that's a lot of it too. Is like a lot of the difference between the jazz unit like the loud stuff is um just kind of like interpreting a lot of the stuff that we st we we're collectively worshiping the same music you know what i mean uh, like yeah uh, we just have to be 
a little bit more quiet. Yeah, we just tone it down a bit, and then we, like you said, we kind of like stretch it out, and it's more like... Um, and I get to use more sense. It's like a fresco painting instead of like <laughs> an acrylic painting. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, where did the name, real quick, where did the name Sunweight come from? That's like a killer band name. Yeah, that's my question. I never asked that. Was, that was... <laughs> Yeah, I I, I named I named the band Sunweight because uh, I don't know. I was because we were we were it's just like the of the sun. Oh. We were called Geist, and then we were we just kept texting each other. We need a new band name. We well, band I mean, name. So when we <laughs> when we were called Geist, I didn't want to be called Geist, but yeah. we just that was like the name of a song we had, and I thought it was a cool name at first. And like, I mean, I didn't think that it would be a permanent. It thing. turns out there are like seven hundred different guys. Yeah, <laughs> I, was yeah. Gonna say, I had a buddy in college. His band's name was Geist. Yeah, and so <laughs> that that <laughs> they, we got a just funny thing. I think I may have said this like in another interview, but we uh, we got an email from Spotify saying that get ready for your new release. And I was like, hmm, that's interesting. We don't have it. We don't have a release yeah. coming out. So this is. News Very to me, yeah. and so I was like, I'm over this because I knew that there had been other guys. Because when we would tell people our name is guys, they would go look for us and be like, "Man, I can't find you. There's like a bunch of guys on there." Mm. I was like, "Oh, well, okay." But after we got that, after I got that email, it was like two o'clock in the morning, and we had already been talking about changing our name. And I think like Sunweight was something that I came come up with because I just thought it sounded cool and like the sun and. The weight, the weight of the, the weight. sun. I felt it was like a good match for the music. I guess I don't know. I mean, it's really fitting, and like I get like um, so many like really good old school vibes. I mean, like I get, uh, and I don't want to like impose. I hate it when people are like your band sounds like this, and I'm like, ah, I didn't hear. We've that heard at all. every comparison <laughs> anyone could ever. But like, I mean, my first one was like King Crimson. Yes, like I got very strong King Crimson vibes. Well, and I, like, I mean, I worship, worship yes. yes, I yeah. worship yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I mean, you know, I the biggest part of the Sunway thing, it's a cool name, and I think it fits the music, but there was also no other anything called yeah. Sunway. Uh, and that was a big And pain. so I immediately, like, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Because yeah. we tried a lot of different names, and a lot of them were just, like, tank it, taken. They would be weird names, too. I don't yeah. remember what they were. Because yeah, we had pretty much had, like, a record ready to go. Yeah. Really? I mean, we had recorded, and we were getting Kevin Nix to master it, and... Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, it was pretty, pretty fast thing. Like we changed our name and then I think like maybe a month later we released our first record under that name. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean like it's getting harder and harder just because of the internet, like it, like all you need is an email and a distro kit account and you're mm -hmm. a band on Spotify. That's you true. Know? It's like, yeah. it's so easy to kind of claim band names now. I know. Well, I mean, I'm sure it was like that too. I'm sure there was a, before Spotify and before all that stuff, I'm sure there's a bunch of bands that were called the same thing, but you oh, would yeah. just you would just the whoever got big first wins. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, that's a race to the top. Because <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm sure there was how many bands were probably called Nirvana or something like that. There's the you know? '60s band called Nirvana. They came on the radio the other day. So you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's uh, yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, can we go ahead and talk about the new record? Because like it's yeah, it's just so cool. To yeah, of course. Um, so. It's a 25, and it, I mean, can we do spoilers a little bit? Can we talk a little bit about it? Of course, it? Yeah, if you don't yeah. want to divulge the story I mean, uh, until afterwards. No, it's okay. okay. I, don't, I mean, we've... I mean, we can say, yeah, I don't see what's wrong with talking about what it is. We don't, okay. It's not like we have a record, I mean, you know. The lyrics, the lyrics are so vague, or well, you know, okay. like that. I, like, I'm curious to know about the story, okay. but like, if, like I said, if it's I, like, we, I don't we want to spoil will, uh, We can explain things, and if it's uh, if it's too in-depth or too much, I'll, I'll just be like, yeah. Okay, uh, I'll just, just get it out. We'll listen to you know. I'll just be like yeah. creative editing. Cool. Yeah, you know. Um, so like, what was your idea behind like the the twenty five minute epic of a story? Go yeah. out. Talk what? to him. Okay. I just I told him. <laughs> I, I came to Nathan with these with the like these three different riffs mm -hmm. that were basically the first three sections of the song, mm -hmm. and I had it all written out on a board. and We went over it together. And I told him I wanted some sci-fi lyrics to go with it. Okay. I didn't explain what kind of uh, story I wanted, just some sci-fi, futuristic uh, lyrics. Mm -hmm. And he came to me with this uh, story, if you want to explain a little bit about it. maybe. Yeah, so I won't, I mean, I won't get into the lyrics, but basically uh, it is 
a story about uh, a, a, an assassin. Like this world, I don't know, man. It's hard to explain, dude. Um, my mind is, is to, to understand what I'm thinking Just about. Just do the first section. All right, all right. Then, well, it's the, based, uh, the premise is this is a world that is basically controlled by one person named Armored Bose. And in, in this world, everybody who is born is given a task at birth, and that's their job for life. And there's all these different jobs. Uh, the song is about a, a female assassin named Cannon Tip. And she basically uh, lives her life as an assassin for Armored Bose and goes around and does it for a while, but then, like, you know, once she becomes a teenager, she has this, like, teenage angst and wants to leave. She doesn't like what she's doing. She doesn't want to be killing people. She doesn't want to be doing any of that. Gotcha. And so she fights Armored Bose and uh, kills him because <laughs> she's an assassin. Right. And then she leaves the planet that she's from and it's not a happy ending. I gotcha. So she, I mean, and, and like, I don't know if you get this from the lyrics or not, but the lyrics are definitely like vague in an artsy way. So they can be kind of as read as like, like a poem almost. Yeah. They're like a different. story. Okay. Yeah. Very and cool. it's kind of has that yes vibe where they, they do that too. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Uh, and it's really interesting to me cause like, uh, musically like it has a very like strong finish at the end of the record mm -hmm. so like mm -hmm. think trying to think back to the lyrics and stuff when you say like it's not a happy ending like I, i'm it makes me want to go back and check it out again yeah just, it's like, uh it's not it's a vague uh unhappy ending but okay yeah she quickly realizes that this in not in nothing this, ain't it. this really nothing <laughs> nothing nothing is nothing is really what she wants it to be and or is what it seems and so okay, okay. she more or less assassinates herself Oh, okay. I gotcha. Yeah. No spoilers. <laughs> no spoilers. Just, just uh, crop that out, will you? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Dead air. No, I'm kidding. Um, I mean, you know, it, that's people are, People could listen to that. That's fine. No. I don't think that's uh, giving away any details or okay. whatever. Yeah. Yeah, but basically it's just a story about Cannon Hip, who is a female assassin. Okay, fantastic. What kind of, like, uh, are there any, like, musical themes that you had? Like, you said you had the three riffs in mind. Are there any um, musical themes that you imposed into? It's, uh, it's really technical about when I say this. It's like a through composed piece where each section is, like, its own different vibe, but it kind of, like, builds on the next section with, like, intensity or just heaviness in general. Mm -hmm. um, especially the first three sections because they just get heavier and heavier and heavier. And then it has this like break and then it does another big crescendo. Okay. Um, it's almost kind of like post-rock in a way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I noticed there's one stretch between like the first, well, mm -hmm. maybe like the first and two movements, first, second movements, is a, there's like a long like ambient stretch in between mm -hmm. those yeah. two. Is that like thematic material for the story? Uh, it's almost, I don't, I mean, I know the riffs came first, but it's kind of like the riffs are serving the story, giving like the atmosphere for the yeah. story. Okay. You cool. know? Um, that kind of, we're kind of already hitting on it. Like your writing process as a band, uh, what all, like you, you talked about the, like you brought some material first. Is it always like that? Or what is your writing process usually look like? Um, usually band? it's all three of us in a room jamming it out. Okay. Yeah. That's how and the we, last we, came Yeah, and we also like work on stuff on our own time too, but then come to, like you say, come to jamming. And I know a lot of the drum parts and stuff I came up with were either done at like Molly's gigs or I think we, were we done recording by the time we were Mm -hmm. high tone? But like yeah, like high like doing playing at the high tone. We I would just try part. out different grooves, that's just like Okay. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> that was a that was a night. We did a good job. Uh, <laughs> um but yeah, just like kind of studying different not just drummers, but just like different music and different art and then just uh kind of letting it germinate naturally. Okay. Some stuff sticks, some stuff doesn't. But then I kind of like, basically how I looked at it with the drums was like trying to build like a, as big of a pool as I can of stuff that like complements what y'all will work on. And then yeah, like when we're all writing together, 
uh, a lot of the time it'll be like just like either the first thing or the thing after that. Uh, I think it, you, 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 when it clicks, it clicks pretty quickly. With I each think. record exchange too. Yeah, we don't we, do the we same try thing. to. Yeah, we don't really we don't have a formula, but we mm -hmm. kind of like try to make each record better than the last yeah. one. Yeah, it, just keep the process switched up. It does sound to me too like I mean the majority of this writing is in person too, which is really cool. Mm, yeah, like, yeah, I mean yeah. you bring ideas to the table because I mean a lot of bands like a lot of bands I'm like I work with now they just, it's all the majority of our writings over email now. I'm like, oh, wow. here's, like you know, mm -hmm. here's a guitar That's part. Fine. Cool. Here's a drum part. Tell mm -hmm. me what sucks. Yeah, and, I feel like so. that would be hard for us just because we're all just used to being in band, like being in band, like even in school. I was, I was gonna say like I feel like a thing with our band is we also like I feel like we all have kind of grown up with music and just gotten into music as like a community social thing i don't yeah. know because like when i was playing bands it wasn't just i mean you know i had plenty of playing guitar alone in my room but there was also like like you said with like marching band or concert band it was like having rehearsals it was like a social activity and also like i don't think our stuff would be as good if it was just the three of us isolated and just yeah emailing each other back and forth <laughs> yeah. because like i get inspired by these two guys to like play better parts yeah, yeah. and like be more into it yeah, yeah. Um, cool. and yeah. it just wouldn't be that way without them yeah. in person um, same here what for you makes an effective rehearsal like for you guys because um, i know when a lot of bands get together there's a lot of like you know i mean like there's a lot of dead time you know like but when you have like kind of a formal music background like the idea of rehearsing it's a little bit more yeah, structured. I mean, there is no dead time with rehearsals. Yeah, we rehearse uh, pretty vigilantly. We rehearse twice a week um, for at least two hours. Yeah. And yeah. during that time, there is no stopping. I mean... That's how we can play for like three or four hours. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we want... We all got into this because we wanted to make... Uh, we wanted to make music that we loved and we wanted to create extensions of ourselves for you know out, to make ourselves feel better mm -hmm. and like I would I mean I didn't know Alan until we played in a band together I didn't know Pat until she came and auditioned mm -hmm. for our band I you know I that's and so we don't we, we don't come in here and be like hey oh, oh, let's let's mess around and, and not you know what I mean like we're here for a reason and if we're not we wouldn't be here unless we yeah. We're there for that. Yeah, so that's that really fantastic. Is. That energy is like contagious. Like I want to go. I like, guess <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what it's all about. Yeah, yeah, like, well, like, that's. I mean, music. Uh, music really helped. I, and I probably can speak for both of them too. Where it it's helped us a lot with our problems uh, internally. And so, yeah. like when we are, when, you know, I I look forward to going and playing with Alan and Pat because it's it's like. A stress journey. reliever. It's, a, it's <laughs> getting to see Alan's beautiful face at twice a week, sometimes more when we do it. And, we'll and like that's a cool thing too. It's like we'll meet up and do recording sessions, like demos. And mm -hmm. I mean, we were just recording like a drone synth song. You know, it's I mean, gonna be our uh, <laughs> ambient intro. Yeah. In the show. So like, oh, that's cool. Um, do Do you have any does like any one person run rehearsal, like a rehearsal leader or anything like that, or is it just everybody shows up? They know. Kind of what they All three of us are kind of the band mom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think, I think uh, if one person has a, some, a certain something that we need to go over, then that's what we'll do. Like sometimes yeah, Alan like, will be like, we need to work this part. It sounded bad. We need to work on this or that. I'll come in. And with our sax player, I, uh, when, we, when, when Josh comes in and we're trying to teach him or you know, get him down with his parts... I will kind of be like, all right, let's uh, let's run this so many times, and then yeah, like, and we've been we've all been playing uh, music long enough and playing with each other long enough too. Like, yeah, we pretty much I would agree. We pretty much like shout out what we we all will probably know what we need to work on. <laughs> it's just yeah, like, but it it changes whoever's like yeah. Last time we played like such and such, that kind of like was lame. We need to like <laughs> do that again. Well, that's just how you get better. I mean, yeah, exactly. To... But I like that there's no one. You don't have a set rehearsal leader or anything like that? No, cool. man. I mean, right. I, yeah. Um, I, I do think it's cool that y'all aren't afraid to break down certain sections and stuff like that. I feel like that's a like a, a sign of maturity for, for a group. You know, like, I've, I've worked with some groups where it's just like, you know, we run, like, we run the set, we run the song, and, like, no feedback. They just keep on rolling. 
I think mm. having a ha, you know having a background in formal music education and stuff like that, like you know, like how to break down specific sections, how to clean them up, and stuff like that. Yeah, so for sure. It's, yeah, it's very fantastic. Cool. Um, so, how did you guys go about recording the new record? Did you go to a studio? Did you DIY it? Okay. No, we went to a recording studio. Okay. Uh, we went to uh, Music and Arts, which is in Midtown. Okay. Um, our producer, uh, Mike Wilson, shout out Mike. Shout out. Um, he, he and I kind of, like, I, I will, uh, I mean, obviously I, I will get their opinions on things, but Mike and I kind of will go to the recording studio, or at least in this instance, and I think in the maybe the in the Feral record too. We I kind of go to Mike to these certain studios <clears throat> and look at them and kind of get the vibe of them and see what is on our price range, obviously. Mm -hmm. And then um, if I like it, then I'll talk to them and see if they're cool with it. I immediately walked into Music and Arts and I loved it. I mean, it's an old jazz recording studio. Oh, that's fantastic. And it's awesome. Where's it at in the day? It's, uh, it's on, I mean, you would not know it's a recording studio. It's like, really? on, yeah, it's, it's like over, it's over like Cooper Young area. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But, um. It's right about the bridge out in Cooper Young or yeah, Nelson or I something. Off a, I used to work off the airway. So yeah. yeah, I mean, you would not know it, it's a recording studio, but it's a really nice one. Oh, it has an awesome brick, uh, wall in it. Okay. Yeah. Did y'all have any kind of uh, like uh, strategy for recording the record? Did you do it all live, or are there any specific techniques y'all did? I mean, yeah, we, we rehearsed really. Like, yeah, we. Yeah. Been, <laughs> I mean, that record, our new record, is like really rehearsed. Really. Yeah. Did y'all yeah. track it all? Like, did y'all do you like drums first, bass first? Did you track it all? Uh, live, or? We, did we did basic drums. tracks together. I thought we yeah. did uh, drums and like basic tracks together on the first day. Then we did bass the second day. And then we did guitar on the third day. Okay, fantastic. And vocals. And, and vocals. Did we do vocals on the... We did vocals and keys on the same day, I think. Was it, wasn't did there we have a fourth, fourth day or was yeah. it three days? It all blurs together. <laughs> yeah. It moves pretty quick, Dude, too. I don't know. Yeah. We recorded that that whole so That whole weekend. Days. That weekend's a blur. <laughs> that whole weekend Just being was nuts. Either I was in that room because or in front of the I, I played guitar, but I also played uh, organ and synthesizer. Okay. So we... And vocals. And so, like, I'm running around, we're all crazy, like, and I'm, like, have a notepad and, like, have yeah. all these sections with notes and, like, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's all diligent. Every part on that record is thought out. Fantastic. Those days are so weird, too. You were talking about, like, uh, you, you spend, like, 12 hours in, like, two rooms. So, like, you walk out and it's dark and you're, like... Yeah, did, did you like? Did we do anything today? Yeah, we did a lot. We just didn't go anywhere. You know, it's like yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. that's another good thing about this studio. It's just very uh, welcoming and homey. Yeah, it's very yeah. It's I was gonna say very welcoming. They had like a back patio area, and we would go chill back there. It was nice. That's fantastic. Uh, did y'all did uh, the same engineer? Did he mix the record and and then uh, mastered and everything too? No, so Mike Wilson, uh, he mixes and produces the record for us. Okay. Um, and he did Feral as well, yeah, and okay. he did the first Geist record. He's done. We, he's yeah. he's pretty much like the. He's fourth, our guy. Yeah, he's like gotcha. the fourth member okay, of some way. Cool. Um, and so he uh, yeah, he he you know, and Daniel assistant and Daniel Lynn assistant assistant engineered the album. But um, Mike mixed it and recorded it all, and then Kevin Nix mastered okay. it from L yeah. Nix master. Yeah, yeah, no, Kevin. Fantastic, guys. Yeah, the guy who mastered all the three six records. Yeah, yeah he did. Yeah, <laughs> he, mastered, he masters a lot of the records that come but out. But he mastered all the Sunweight records too. Yeah. Boom. Up top. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Shout out, <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it's fun because uh, you know Kevin's down in Florida, and I'm sure whenever he gets our records, he's probably like, "Oh, these guys again." <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate these. All guys. that weird Miss Prog stuff. <laughs> oh, no, that's fantastic, man. Um, what you said, you're a Yes fan. Like, what are you, some of your uh, other than like yes, what are some of the other primary influences as a band? Rush, uh, Black Sabbath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Black Sabbath. Bold Sabbath, underline. Sure. <laughs> um, I mean, I listen to a lot of Mars Volta, King Crimson. Yeah, definitely King Crimson. Um, I mean, I listen to, but I mean, I like stuff like Every Time I Die. And yeah. We're all into the same prog bands. Okay. Um, but then I'll switch it up and listen to some Lionel Hampton. 
or you know Benigo. some Benny Goodman. Oh, don't get me started. Yeah, that's what we were saying about the jazz. Well, count, get like, some Count Basie going. I mean, you'll in in like a Sunweight song. The way I think of it is like sometimes like it'll be Black Sabbath influence and like Benny Goodman influence or like Gene Krupa influence. It's like the quiet section is the Sabbath part, and then it's like. But then if you like kind of got rid of the distortion, sometimes I'll listen to it and I'm like, that's like a. Like a big band. Like, yeah, somebody will tell me that one part like, sounds like something, and I'll be like, "Bro, that sounds that sounds like Lionel Hampton, bro." <laughs> Remember when they said we sound like punk Prince? Punk, which is a great compliment. Somebody but it's called us sound thrash like. jazz, and I was like, "That's great. that's we were, awesome. We're neo progressive jazz core. Oh my god, <laughs> we're post core. we're post progressive neo <laughs> post neo neo jazz. We're post progressive neo jazz thrash core." I can get down to that. Neo, um, Neo Thrash Jazz Court. A lot of Miles, a lot of Herbie, actually. Big one. Herbie Hancock. Oh, yeah. Herbie Hancock. Is worship it Herbie. It's Seriously. Not, it's not John Hancock. It's <laughs> Herbie <laughs> Hancock. Yeah, we're all looking <laughs> up. We're all looking up the wrong Hancock. Oh. Do you have a guilty pleasure band at all? Or are you not ashamed of any of your music? I'm douche. Uh, I, I, if, I, you I, hate, if you hate on somebody for liking a band, then you need to look inward, man. There we go. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Don't be ashamed of what you listen Don't to. Don't be ashamed, dude. Exactly. I'll tell you what my first concert ever in sync. That's, That's pretty yeah. sick actually. Straight up, son. I will and play. I don't know why, but Justin Timberlake never graduated fifth grade, and so he at that concert, his teacher from fifth grade <laughs> <laughs> came out with a fucking <laughs> oh, sorry. came out his teacher came out with like a certificate that's like says he graduated the fifth grade. And everybody's I like, what? <laughs> and I was like, what? He made it. I went with my dad, like, man. Did he like quit school or just like? No? I mean, I think he joined Missy, Mickey Mouse Club and was like, probably got a tutor or something. I mean, I'm sure he like got a GED or something. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. When you're that. that sexy and that talented, yeah. what's it matter? And then you bring it back. I mean, <laughs> I mean, and then you bring, and then you literally go away and bring it back. Got it right back. That's fantastic. I mean, I just got back from the games exchange down the street. I got uh, Greatest Hits of Motorhead and Spice Girls. So that's that pretty much sums but it up. But that's two probably good records. I mean, I, that's love, what I'm I saying. like Spice Girls great. too. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's like, that's what it's all about. Every like, boy and every girl, spice up your life. Yes. And you can that's run the That's the moral of this podcast episode. It's <laughs> to spice up your life. Yeah. <laughs> fantastic. What about uh, you? Do you so? What do you play? What do I play? I like to ask the interviewers. Let's interview you. Too. Let's flip yeah. it. Yeah. I, have, how many people <laughs> ask you questions? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> how long did it take you to grow your beard? Uh, I don't know. I like quit shaving like last summer or something like that. Last summer. That's pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. Do you condition it? No, I don't. I probably okay. should. And like I have a seven month old month old daughter, and she's decided that this is like oh, that's a that's 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 <laughs> So are you sleeping yet or? Yes, Good kind of. You. I mean, it's like a new... I've learned how to sleep again. It's not <laughs> how I used to, but I, I do sleep. Nice. So I, my body has adjusted, we'll say that. Well, good so. for you. Yeah, I'm getting married at the end of May, so... Well, congrats, man. Yeah, yeah, congrats. yeah. It's going to be fun. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, to her. <laughs> <laughs> he's already married to the band. Now he's that's true. Two. I'm going to have two wives. There you go. Lady son. Oh, you asked me what did I play? Is that what yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you play? Uh, my degrees in percussion. What? You then, lucky dog. I uh, play bass and guitar and stuff too. God, you're just, I so bet you're talented. so good. I bet you're better than all of us. You, yeah, absolutely. This dude's like, I'm not that good. I know. <laughs> I play a lot of country gigs, so you know how good it might be. Dude, dude, country yeah. shredders are <laughs> sick. Where the money is. Don't yeah. care. I mean, we but no, yeah. Uh, drum is my main bag, so. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. And then I teach guitar. Who's your favorite drummer? Ooh. Top three. Do not, do top three. not say the wrong answer either. Genre doesn't matter. Uh, Mike Johnston. I don't know if you know Mike Johnston. I don't know who that is. He's a really great educator, too. So that's okay, like cool. I'm sure there's like a lot of great drummers that I don't know about. Oh my god, dude. Put me on the spot here. <laughs> I really like the guy that plays on. Uh, uh, the guy that plays for Modest Mouse. I don't know if he's my favorite drummer. Oh, snap. But he oh, definitely man. like a changed out from how left I. Field, man. Yeah, he's he, a great like, drummer. He changed how I drum. Like I, that was wow. like yeah, the most one of the most influential That's cool. drummers on like how I play drums. Yeah. Uh, Aaron Sterling. I don't know if you know Aaron Sterling is. I know. No. He's mm -hmm. on like if it's on the radio and has real drums, he's on it right now. Oh, <laughs> he's okay. with John okay. He's a hired right gun. Now. Oh wow. Yeah, and he does like he started producing out of his home studio and oh, uh, wow. he's played on like. 
Lana Del Rey records, every like the past three John Mayer records, this guy like you name making it. money playing. I know, I got that. I bet that guy's chops are ridiculous. Yeah, he's he's fantastic. He's nice. freaking hilarious. So, like if you follow him on Instagram and stuff, so nice. Funny. I'll have to check it out. Yeah. All right, cool. Mine's John Theodore, so. I don't know who John Theodore is. What? Uh, the original drummer for the Mars Volta. Oh, okay. See, so, yeah, like I I got into uh, oh Thomas Bridges is one of my favorite drummers too. Thomas Bridges is good. Um, yeah. I'll just, just leave it. <laughs> like, I'll I, just leave it. I, I mean, like that Mars Volta record, he just like oh, rants I mean, the dude, whole time. Look, like, but, like, Bedlam, play look, through Bedlam one of is one songs. of my look. Bedlam <laughs> is one of my favorite Mars Volta records, yeah. but it's my fourth favorite Mars Volta. Yeah, I mean, he just because rants everything the with John is. I mean, John Theodore is like the mixture of one of, my, of like some of the one of the two greatest uh, rock drummers. It's he's like if John Theodore. He's like if John Bonham and Keith Moon. Had a baby together. Yeah, I could do that. And which records did he play on? Uh, he played on the Tremulant EP, Delouse in the Comatorium, okay. Francis the Mute, and Amputexture. I just I just listened to Delouse yesterday. So nice. Okay. nice. Cool. I see. I like Thomas Pritchard because he's like, here's a bar line, here's a bar line. Does not matter what. Like when he like, <laughs> plays a fill, he's like, from here to you here. Know don't like, worry about it. Thomas going to get to it. Yeah. <laughs> Thomas Pridgen was probably had to be tamed for that. The yeah. entire, I'm sure Omar was like. You're gonna do this, and you're not gonna do anything else. Yeah. Well, the the he did the record after that, Octahedron. Yeah, well, it's I like think way dialed back from. Well, I think that that whole record, but you know, he records all those people separately. He doesn't let them hear their part, anybody's parts. It's very talkative. What? About. Yeah, That's... up until Nocturnicit, their last record, every record before then, Omar produces, and he gives them their parts and records them separately, and then mixes it all together. That yeah. is. And on Amputexture, their third record, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm so nerding out right now. I'm having a blast right now. But on on their third record, Amputexture, he didn't even play guitar on it. He wanted to just produce the record, so he wrote all the parts, got everybody to play them. Guess who he got to play all of his guitar parts? Who? John Frusciante. Are you serious? Yep. Holy crap. So go and listen to Amputexture. There, it's their third rec, their third major LP. Yeah. Every guitar part, except for some a few solos, is John Frusciante. Holy crap. That Omar taught the parts to. That's blowing my mind right now. Yeah. Cool. Damn. And there's John Frusciante solos all over that place, too. Oh, God. It's such a good record. Oh, that and good. on Francis the Mute, he has a really good... Anyway. Yeah, it's okay. You'll talk, talk all night. I will talk <laughs> all night about the Mars full time. I, I am so... One day, like, we're going to be at the high tone. I'm like, all right. It's 3 a.m. Absolutely. Like, last call. God, God forbid if I'm out at 3 a.m. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, I go to bed at 8.30, guys. It's already... Oh, yeah, it's almost my bedtime, guys. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool, Leo. Um, So, you're about to come out with a new record. Anything new and exciting on the horizon? You've got a tour coming up or anything like that? Uh, yeah, I mean, booking shows. We're playing April 30th in Clarksville, Tennessee, at the Rebel House. Fantastic. Um, but before that, we're playing... April 22nd right. at High Town. Right, our release, so show, album release show. Our album release show is on the 22nd. Um, but did we say that? We said that. Already. Yeah. Bears repeating. The Chicago Bears repeating. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> anyway, and then, yeah, I mean, we may, you know, uh, I mean, we're, we're playing in June. We're doing some stuff. We're going to be playing. I'm getting married, so that's happening. Are you going to play at your wedding? No. no. Uh, <laughs> that was be a terrible funny. wedding band. I'm not doing anything except for getting married on my wedding day. <laughs> I can support that. Okay. Yeah. But um yeah, I mean we're we're definitely we're trying to get on some festivals. Yeah. That's the main thing we're wanting to do. We played uh the what's the fair at the at Shelly Farm? Uh, Delta Fair. We played, we played the Delta, Delta Fair that last was awesome. year. Okay. And that was fun. Well, uh, what did your booking process look as a, uh, look like as a band? Like, uh, I pretty much you pretty book much everything. Okay. Yeah. Man, just hit me up. I got you. So you usually just like, you call the venues. Do you do the email or? Oh, uh, we email. I'll call. I'll write a telegram if I have to. I'll uh, you know I'll do the beeping. Um, telegram. The, the, no, 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 the, the Morse code. I'll, oh, I mean, yeah. if they're into that, I'll try that. I, I got mean, you. I don't know if you had any kind of specific strategy for No, I mean, dude, nowadays you just have to, like, pester and, you know what I mean? Like, people, it's hard. I, and, 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 like, bands ask, you know, how we get out of town. Some, uh, you know, some bands, I'm like, dude, you just have to hit these people up all, all the time, time and be annoying. 
Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure. That's really what it is. I'm sure a lot of used to, you. You have to be able to be annoying. I'm sure like, a lot of people are annoyed with me because I hit them up so much. Yeah. I feel like that's kind of what. Yeah, like you said, you kind of have to do it nowadays. Um, if you want people to see your stuff, I mean, yeah. you know. Um, if you, we can edit this out if you don't want to talk about it. But you had a recent like tour mishap a couple of months ago. Oh yeah, like, we can totally talk about. Yeah, so like what, <laughs> would you mind telling us the story of all of that? I heard from uh, Zach Pratton's uh, friend of mine. Oh, yeah, he yeah. He told me part of the story, but I'd love to hear part And, of and actually, story. shout out to Risky Whispers for shout being out. our fucking, God, I keep doing it's that. Shout story. out to Risky Whispers for being our awesome tour buddies. Yeah, for being our awesome Grand tour buddies Zach, and just being out. awesome people. And they have, like, ever since we played our first show with them, they have always been really good friends yeah. to us. And, um... And, awesome band. and they and they really helped us out that weekend. I mean, yeah. Zach slept with us in this in this room, room at a wrecking yard. Oh yeah, I forgot about until that. Uh, when you my fiance that. came and saved us. Oh my god, it was a nightmare. But anyway, so we we played. Uh, where did we play? Springwater. We played Springwater in Nashville. It was a good show. It was a great show. A lot of good, um, a lot of people came out. It was a really nice. It was like the bands we played with were awesome, and then yeah, we're going to get Waffle House. It's like we're at a red light, morning. yeah, at one in the morning. Alan, trying to get some so Waffle so House. we have we we Alan rode with with Zach, yeah, rode with Zach. Zach, and we Pat and I rode together in my car, mm. and we had all of our gear in the back of my car, and so we loaded up. We're heading out. They're on their way to Waffle House. I like make this weird turn and like. We end up on the highway, and I'm getting off of the highway, and I'm at the stoplight at this intersection of the highway. Dude, and next thing I know, we just get smoked, like, boom, a big crash, and and then, and like, I, and we're like, uh, and next thing I know, I look up, and like, we're across the intersection. Oh, good lord. Pat's like, what was that? And I was like, we just got hit. I was like, and I, I get out, and like... My car is just crushed. It was smoked. Oh my goodness. And I look at my, and I look at the gear, and all the gear's messed up. Like Alan's amp is crushed. My amp is like, the 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 cage of my amp is pushed all the way in. We couldn't open the back, right? We like, couldn't open the back of the car, and we couldn't open one side of the car, and so like, we had to. My guitars were like one of the one of the cases was like a right angle. Oh, good lord, man. Yeah, it was it was messed up. And so we got what we could out of the car, and it, and it put icing on the cake. It was like 20 degrees outside. And so we get the stuff out of the car, and, like, the police are there. Right after we got hit, I got out of the car, and I see a, somebody running away. I'm are like, you serious? I'm like, well, I was thinking that that was somebody else trying to go get help maybe or something. I don't know. I don't know what was going on. I was like, what is happening? Yeah. Like, you know. And uh, apparently it was a drunk lawyer, or I don't know if he was drunk or not, but I mean, why that? Why would you run away? He yeah. ran away on foot and like the car that caused the wreck, because we were in front, there was a car behind us and then the car, the car that um, caused the wreck hit the car behind us and that's what hit us. So I mean, yeah. like if this person had... I mean, Pat and I may not even be here if this, yeah. if this car had yeah. not been there. And so, the car that caused the wreck was owned by a law firm in Nashville, and uh, I won't say the name, but um, it didn't belong to like a sole person, so they could not charge anybody with like the wreck. Are you serious? Dude, good luck going yeah. after an army of lawyers. Yeah, <laughs> and my, so yeah, and then like you know, my car was totaled. Our gear, like a lot of our Alan's amp, got destroyed. Uh, like guitar cases, a snare was a, a drum equipment, all, like all this stuff was was damaged. Thank, thankfully, my wonderful fiance Emma, uh, she made a GoFundMe. And yeah. Like okay. tons and, of people have. Like I'm just blown away. Yeah. Like, I mean, we yeah. all are. Yeah. Yeah. Just beside yeah. ourselves with the support we've received from that too, and. Again, like shout out Meredith for waking up before the crack of dawn. She drove driving all the she way. She drove from Memphis, from Memphis to Nashville at picked two us, o'clock in the morning. Picked us up. It looked like the moon. We were a bunch insane. of junk stuff. <laughs> yeah. And for those who don't see, my fiance is sitting over there. <laughs> but we needed you in the shot this whole time. No. 
But we'll shout her out, Meredith Potter. She's an artist, and she's Ow. awesome. She makes great art. You should check it out. Meredith, you're awesome. Did you design the record? The album On our record? Feral album, she nice. designed a single artwork and also the ins the inside with the credits. There is uh, okay. she she uh, her artwork is is cool. that. Cool. Uh, who designed the artwork for this record? Uh, somebody that she introduced me to, uh, Jackson Reynolds, okay, who is uh, a Memphis College of Art alum. Okay. Cool. And man, I, I'll show you after I got you. the thing, but I'm stoked. Uh, and then if we oh well, I guess you see it. It's it's the poster too. So if you've seen the the oh yeah I have. yeah okay yeah. cool we'll post it in the show notes yeah we yeah, can do yeah. that for yeah, yeah. podcast Woo! okay. Yeah, uh, and I'll post a link to you guys on Spotify. Also, where, so I guess kind of wrapping up, where can people find you guys on the internet and all that stuff? Um, um, we're on everything. On everything. <laughs> sunweightmusic.com, at sunweightmusic on Instagram and uh, Twitter. Twitter. Fantastic. Well, guys, uh, thanks so much. Anything else you guys want to add, promote, anything? Uh, y'all are fantastic people. And like I said, oh, you're fantastic. Thank you uh, for great. real for having us. Uh, we you. really appreciate it. Dude, y'all are amazing. I Like like I said, your uh, dedication to, like, it's so refreshing to see a band dedicated to uh, a style of music that they love so much. Like, you know, it's really... It, um, especially nowadays, it's really hard to be passionate about your own art mm-hmm. because, like, yeah. there's just you know, it's really easy to like want to do something that's like a trend, or or just get self conscious about doing your own art because you have to be vulnerable right, yeah, yeah. to see yeah. like three individuals that are so dedicated about like this style of music that they're so passionate about is like is very contagious. Yeah, so, people really want to make cool. small songs, but we want to make long songs. Yeah, yeah I mean, you made a twenty five minute epic, man, and it's absolutely wonderful. Like, yeah, I, yeah. thank you. So, uh, so Sunweight, Cannon Tip comes out April 22nd. April 22nd. Right everywhere. You can go see them at the high And uh, please pre-order vinyl. Uh, just a, just a tree. little tidbit about the record. We, we recorded and mastered this twice. We didn't record it twice, but we mastered it twice because we solely wanted people to listen to it on vinyl. There will be no CD made of this. It's only vinyl because... Um, you will really get the uh, the way that we would like you to hear it is is on that oh, that's way. Because it'll be the best way, to, you know, I don't know. Dude, I'm totally... But pre-order the yeah, vinyl, totally please. Vinyl. I mean, uh, you, you could play it with an MP3 in your car while you're driving somewhere, but I think the vinyl version would be better. Like, I'm here for the vinyl. If I get one, will you guys sign it for me? Dude, Absolutely. Of course. of course, man. I have a story about vinyl. So, like... Uh, my wife and I were dating and she really wanted a record player and that's like how I knew we were getting married because I bought her one because I knew it was going to be in our house. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, nice. this is it. Like, I'm getting a record player for us, man. Yeah, so. dude. Yeah, yeah. So please, yeah, pre-order the vinyl and uh, come to the show uh, April 22nd if you can. And cool, yeah. What time? Uh, what time? Eight. Uh, yeah, the doors are at seven. The show will start at eight, and it's with two good bands: um, Glorious Abor from Memphis, Tennessee. Shout out Josh. Stevens. Yeah, shout out to Josh, uh, who's a great, great person. And then um, our Tupelo girlfriends will be playing with us. The Modern Body. Well, they're not called the Modern Bodies, but they're called Modern Bodies. Oh, that's awesome. And they're great. They're great. They're awesome. Too. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, looking forward to it, guys. I will be there. Uh, Got to get me some vinyl. Yeah. This has been Sunway, everybody. Thank you guys so much again. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I just wanted to say thank you so much again for listening. You can find everything Modern Working Musician related at keeganpaluso.com. You can find us on all the socials at Modern Working Musician. Uh, If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can find me on my website or send me an email at keeganpaluso at music at gmail.com. Thank you so much again for listening, and I hope you have a great day. (music) 